How do we translate the 3D world onto a 2D surface, like a drawing or a painting? How do we break down what we see in lines, colors, and shapes? A simple question, what is the shape of the canvas as you see it? A rectangle? We all know this to be the shape from the past experiences. But this is how we actually see it. The near side appears longer than the far side. A trapezoid. Did your eyes fool you? It is easy to see the shape in the photo. Look around. Can you see the shapes and separate them from what you know? Our eyes contain lenses through which light from the object falls at the retina. One image is formed per eye at a slightly different angle. In each single image, the closer objects form a bigger image compared to the farther objects. Our brain can analyze the relationship of two objects' angles and sizes within a space to create a three-dimensional world as we see it. Consequently, the brain commands our hands to draw what it sees rather than what the eye sees. Now look around you in the room you are sitting in. What are the shapes and lines around you as you see them? If you are sitting where the figure is in the photo, the fan from your viewpoint is an oval. If you are sitting directly below it, it will appear to be a circle. Now you can see the second fan's oval is thinner and smaller. Now focus on the converging lines or the corners of the floor and ceiling which meet at the back wall. As you see the floor and ceiling lines move closer to each other until they are interrupted by the wall you are directly looking at. The imaginary lines joining the outer boundaries of the two fans do the same. What are the other lines you see converging? The other side of the ceiling and floor. All these lines converge at a single point that corresponds to the eye level or point of focus of the camera. Things are really so simple to nature. There are no straight lines, but you can see the shape of the top of the trees diminishing in the distance. Can you see the imaginary line connecting the meeting points of the trees and the ground following the converging path? You can see the convergence of all four imaginary lines as they intersect the inner corners of the staircase. At the 5th floor, look at all the convergencies here. Look at the windows on the 5th and 4th floor. Also look at the pathway on the ground. On the 4th floor, notice how the pathway becomes broader near the end. On the 2nd floor, see how sharp the convergence of the pathway becomes. Also notice the row of similar objects on the ground floor. On the ground view, the pathway converges very sharp. The window and the other lines of the walls facing us remain rectangular. We are looking at these buildings from almost directly above, hence the sharp convergence. The buildings are a little farther away from us, hence the convergence is not as sharp. These are very far away from us, hence they almost look like perfect cuboids, unlike the ones in the previous pictures. Science of Approximation at Work In this image, the little lying buildings are almost looking flat. We are looking at them from a distance which is much greater than their height. Also notice how the colors fade and turn bluish as you look farther ahead. Notice the sunlight coming from the right hand side and look at how it is lighting up the buildings. Notice how different the buildings in the sunlight look from the others in the shade. The sunlight reflected from the buildings travel to our eyes unchecked, whereas the ones in the shade are blurred from the atmosphere in between. Look at how the lights at the buildings in the right hand side affect its walls. Notice how the street lights make us notice the streets, which would otherwise fade in oblivion. Notice the pattern of changing light as you look deeper into the corridor. 
Look at the halo of lights formed by the chandelier. Notice that the light is not composed of a single color, but shades of yellows and whites. Also notice the levels of darks and lights on the ceiling. The light travels to the bottom of the quarry. The waves act as lenses with different focal lengths, collecting different amounts of light. Notice the reflection of light on the metal and glass of the building. And look how the car dashboard is reflected on the window plane. Look at how the reflections from the street lights light up the otherwise dark water. If there was no light, there wouldn't be any light from any objects, reflected or otherwise. Hence, no light, no shapes, and no color. 